As we navigate this unprecedented time for our company, our industry, and our country, I've been sharing periodic updates that I think may be helpful or interesting to you. And here's the latest. Well, many of you have sent questions about what we're doing to stay ahead of change, how we're preparing for the future, and how far into the future we're looking. Well, we had a record year in 2019, which put us in a very strong position coming into this year. We had an excellent performance in January and February, and we had no signs of demand weakness until late February. And then, of course, things deteriorated very rapidly. Our priorities were and remain, number one, the health and safety of our employees and customers, and number two, ensuring we have plenty of cash to see our way through the losses we're certain to incur. To live up to those priorities, we've enacted a host of procedures that are summarized in the Southwest Promise. Since the company is in intensive care, so to speak, our immediate planning is focused on today, actions in 30, 60, and 90-day timeframes. Every department in the company put together emergency 30, 60, 90-day plans that respond to the crisis and prioritize how we navigate through this recovery and begin to reimagine what our new normal will look like. We continue to build on these plans while remaining agile and adjusting as the environment and CDC recommendations change. The plans serve as a guide to how we prioritize our work, assess resources, and move forward with a safe, high quality, and low cost mindset. For the next 90 days, we're focusing on some key initiatives. The first is restoring confidence with our customers so they feel comfortable traveling with us. That's the Southwest promise, and it's imperative that we live up to that big word, promise. We solicited feedback from customers regularly, and more so now. Our recent updates to our face covering policy and the reintroduction of in-flight service on flights more than 251 miles are examples of how we're listening to customers while also keeping employee and customer safety top of mind. Most policies, though, will remain unchanged. We'll continue to offer low fares with no change fees, no bag fees, and a safe environment when our customers are ready to fly. You won't see the equivalent of middle seats sold on Southwest flights, at least through the end of July, and that's a part of our Southwest promise. If we have more demand for a particular flight, we'll add additional flights to meet that demand. And again, that's to allow our middle seats to remain open, providing customers more onboard personal service. With respect to longer term planning, say 12 months and beyond, there are a series of questions that have to be answered. Are we still in a pandemic? What's the state of the economy? What's travel demand? How many seats are our competitors flying? How many flights do we need? How many airplanes? How many employees? Lots of questions. So we're creating contingency plans to be prepared if radical changes are required in order for us to survive. We're well prepared for this catastrophe and we must strive to stay that way. Our scenario planning also involves the fleet and the max return to service work continues and we're hopeful it will be flying by the fourth quarter. It's a great airplane. It's a superior airplane to the next-gen 737 that we're currently operating. It's the most cost-effective plane in terms of fuel and maintenance and provides a great customer experience. The number of aircraft in the fleet varies by scenario and it's dependent upon future demand assumptions. Just like staffing, we've scrubbed our network thoroughly and we know what we want to do when traffic returns. We'll compete hard for customers Understanding it will be a brutal, low fare environment as there are far more airline seats right now and there will be for some time than there are customers. But our low cost philosophy, strategy, and structure will serve us very well. And these are just a few of the many initiatives taking place to ensure Southwest not only survives, but is in a strong position to thrive in the future. Many of you sent in questions about our face covering policy and specifically 
Why aren't we requiring them? We've updated our face covering policies for both our employees and our customers. For employees, we're requiring that all uniformed employees wear face coverings when they're in the presence of customers. For customers, we're requiring them to wear a face covering throughout their travel journey. If they choose not to wear one, they'll be denied boarding. After hearing your feedback, we felt these changes needed to be made. We know there are people who feel very passionately on both sides of the face covering issue, but our duty is to protect the safety of our employees and our customers. And right now, that means all of us doing our part and wearing face coverings in accordance with the CDC's recommendations and considering the cabin seating configuration. In this environment, wearing face coverings is a key way we show hospitality. Our customers will feel welcomed, cared for, and appreciated when they see we have their best interest at heart. It shows we can empathize with their concerns. It reassures them we are living up to the Southwest promise by introducing additional cleaning processes, giving them space to distance themselves from other customers on our aircraft, and the most visual sign of all, by wearing face coverings.